Hi everyone. So this is the paper about Instruct GPT, and uh, the title of the paper is Training Language Models to Follow Instructions with Human Feedback. Uh, the reason they have trained um, a model with human feedback is because we want the language models to perform or give responses which are more preferred by humans. And what usually happened with GPT-3 that the response were good, but they were not very, very aligned to how human wants. Um, and so that's why OpenAI created uh, playgrounds uh, at their website. So we can play with them, play, uh, we can play with the models and whatever prompts we submit at the playground interface, those data are filtered and it is used in the training of the model. Uh, in, in training GPT-3 further and they call that model GPT-3. Now um, there is uh, some human labor involved and uh, there are three different models which are trained here and uh, so I'll directly go to the um, to the the figure uh, but, but before that uh, the the result of this training is that the instruct GPT model is has improvement in truthfulness, reduction in toxic output generation. Uh, uh, and what happens with that, because we are aligning more towards human response, uh, the model uh, slack a bit in uh, being performing, uh, in performing on the NLP data sets, right? So they call it alignment task because the model has been aligned towards human preferences so it lacks in some other uh, areas and they have come up with some uh, technique called gradient mixing to uh, mitigate that but let's uh, directly go to the figure so the paper has this uh, three uh, stages uh, this uh, got cropped when i downloaded the paper so sorry about that uh, but i think uh, the figures from the hugging face were more clear so I uh, added those figures here so this is called reinforcement learning using um, from human feedback so what happens here is this is the whole setup um, okay so there is one language model here there is one language model here and this is the final model which we are trying to train okay so there are three models now why we are using three models so the first stage is uh, you train a language model and we call it initial language model. It's a regular language model where we have text data and we train it. But we also train it using, uh, so we take a pre-trained GPT-3 model and then uh, train it further on the prompts. Now these prompts are nothing but uh, the prompts from the playground. So you have prompts on the playground, open AI prompts on the open uh, AI play playground, and then you filter it, and then you put it here. So you have a, a pre-trained GPT-3 model, which is fine-tuned on these uh, prompts, right? So we call it initial language model. Now, once we have the uh, initial language model, um, you give it more prompts and it's going to generate some response now there is human uh, who is who will uh, rate those responses okay so for example there will be uh, so what will we will do is we'll take a prompt and uh, the model is going to generate number of responses right for every prompt it generates it can generate multiple responses now there will be a human who will rate those responses. You know, some responses are preferred by the human, uh, some are not. So we will rank them. And once you have that ranking, there is another model which learns that ranking. Okay. So the training data set for this model will be the sample, basically uh, the prompt data set, the responses, as well as the ranking for that response. So this model is uh, um, the only purpose of this model is to uh, give you a reward. Uh, reward is nothing but a rank. So if the response is preferred by the human, the reward will be high. 
Okay, so that's the only pur purpose for this language model. Now you have these two. Now, but there is no way that... So this is a step where you, you can uh, register the like and dislike from the human. Now we want something that it gets uh, included in the objective function so that we can somehow update the weights of our language model so that this dislike and... Uh, like and dislike from the humans is uh, included uh, and the model learns that in, in one language model, okay? Um, so this is the overall setup for uh, GPT-3 Instruct. So this model is GPT-3. Uh, uh, this is the model uh, Instruct GPT. So what's happening here, right? So this is the initial model which we fine-tuned on prompts. And then... Um, this is the reward model and this is your final uh, so this will be your final loss which includes a penalty shift so what happens is if you give a prompt to this language model which is being trained this is a copy uh, this is uh, so how do we initialize this model this is a copy of initial language model and um, and you basically like train it right uh, reward model can be of different sizes for this paper, they have taken a six billion, uh, six billion model, and uh, what you do here is. So we want this model to behave in a certain way, right? And the behavior should be that it should generate a response, which is not very different from GPT three, uh, but it should give a high reward. So we need somehow the help of both of these uh, models to, you know, like it should align itself in a way that it has that behavior so how we can do this right so one way is that when it uh, gives you a response it shouldn't deviate much from the gpt3 model so we give it a kl uh, shift penalty right and it should give a high reward so we also should you know when we give the response to this reward model it should give you the re reward and you include all of these both of these uh, uh, elements into the loss and you get the gradient of the loss and update the weights of this model, right? That's how it is being trained. Uh, so there are some uh, features about this model that uh, 1.3 billion model can be compared to uh, 175 billion of GPT-3. It has 85% uh, of the time the output from this model is preferred by humans uh, it is 25% less toxic and it doesn't help much in the bias, okay? So now we'll see some... Uh, so these are like the major three steps. We collect demonstration data and train a supervised policy. Policy here it means language model. So that's the first initial language model. The second is collect comparison data and train a reward model. That's a smaller 6 billion model, reward model. And then you optimize a policy against the reward model using PPO. So PPO is a reinforcement learning algorithm uh, which is being used to update the uh, weights. Okay. And uh, you can read more about the, what kind of data set they have used. But in uh, for the prompts, they have taken it from the OpenAI playgrounds. But for the original uh instruct gpt when they didn't have any playground they they created that using uh, uh labelers and they created few types of data sets a uh, plane is that uh, it's a simple um it's like it's a simple the labelers come up with some task and create the prompts few short means they uh add multiple queries and respond pairs to the instruction and user based is um it's like they have so many people listed use cases in the waitlist application to the open ai um, and the labelers came up with some prompts uh, corresponding to these use cases so after everything um, they had these many in the training uh, first model these many uh, prompts in the uh, reward model and this is the final for the ppo the final one so we see that the data sets is not very very big uh, in this method as compared to the training pre-training data sets so the task uh, uh, so what kind of task are used in the training so 
most of the uh, prompts which are submitted by humans are related to uh, question answering dialogue summarization extraction and um most of them are th- that and 96% of them is english so that's what the model is being trained on this is about how they collected human data sets uh, a data set from humans uh, so they got 40 contractors from uh, a different organization and then they um so they have two types of uh, workers one is the uh, one who helped with the training data sets and who were involved in the training and the second is the held out labelers which uh, who were not involved in the training uh, data sets but they were involved in the evaluation part okay um the reward model okay so there is some uh, so we'll go through the objective functions and then directly go to the uh, de- the results so supervised uh, is the first this is the step 1 this is the step 2 and then this is the step 3 okay so step 1 is about um Uh, fine tuning the regular in a uh, gpt3 so we fine tune gpt3 on a labeler demonstration using supervised learning and there are some details of how they are being trained but in each is like the only key point to here is you fine tune a gpt3 model on the prompt data set so that becomes the initial language model the second is uh, reward modeling so they use 6 6 billion reward model and uh, it was trained on cross entropy loss with a comparison of labels what it means is the loss function for the reward model it will be a cross entropy loss and what's inside here is um this is the reward and this is reward for what uh, some prompt and the response from the model so the if there is a prompt the you get 4 to 9 responses from the model and you hand it to a labeler not labeler but you actually compare uh, every response uh, in pair so here it is uh, y w and y l are being compared and you get a loss from it um so this is the reward uh, the loss function from the uh, for, for the reward model and for the reinforcement learning objective is that uh so they maximize the objective what it means is that um so the first one is that it should ha- ha- it should have high reward so the r theta should be high for the x prompt and y output and then this is like uh the penalty um that it shouldn't deviate much from the gpt3 and this is used to um mix gradients if if uh, the gamma is zero that means it is called ppo uh it's a normal instruct gpt model but if we no it's not a, a gpt uh it's it's a model which is trained using reinforcement learning algorithm ppo and if you are also mixing a gradient from the pretrained model you include this uh this part in the objective and that model is called ppo ptx and this is the uh instruct gpt model which is out there okay so for the evaluation so the overall intention of instruct gpt is to train model it's a trained model that act according to the user intention so we align the model we align the gpt3 model towards humans okay so the result um so this is these are like the different model sizes and this is the win rate against uh, sft supervised fine tuning tuned model 175 billion what it means is if you give 100 prompts to a six suppose i want to see what this point means it means that if you give uh if you take a 6 billion uh ppo so the orange is ppo if you take a 6 billion ppo model and then around 60% of uh, and uh, around 60% of the responses 
if you have like 100 pro, pro, 100 prompts 60% of the time i will prefer um ppo responses 6 billion responses as compared to the 175 sft right so if you see that uh, most of the time and this is true for held out workers and training workers uh this is the these are the prompts these are the responses which are prompts generated using open ai uh, gpt gpt3 api and this is on the instruct gpt api and if you see like uh, all these uh, ppo pdx models and also like ppo model actually is preferred than the big uh, 175 billion model like if you see here this is 1.3 billion so the responses from this is preferred as compared to the sft and also for like the win rate is more for ppo for ppo ptx model and then they uh, have some results across uh, uh, different uh, use cases like in hallucination it hallucinates less if if there are some constraints in the instruction ppo has ability has the ability to follow it more and for customer assistant it's not much different but it still does better they also compared it uh, with the flan and t uh, to uh, t t0 sorry and uh, they found that this is does better uh, on the truthfulness qa data set um, gray bar indicates uh, truthfulness and colored bar indicates the truthfulness and informativeness so you see that if there is instruction it does like better ppo does better uh, so gpt instruct gpt shows small uh, improvement in toxicity toxicity over gpt3 but not bias um okay uh, so gpt instruct gpt still does uh, some errors so you can look more into what kind of errors it makes so the idea is uh, the whole idea is that that they have taken a big pre-trained model and make it more aligned towards humans using reinforcement learning. So that's the main takeaway from this um, paper. And the method they have used um, has been has helped them to align the model better. So for more details, you can like look into the paper and uh, that's all for this paper. Thank you.